Okay, so this was the third residential training camp we'd had this fall of 2013, and the purpose of it is to perpetuate what the wrestlers learned during the summer. So after 10 weeks of learning new technique, oftentimes they don't have an opportunity to drill it or review it or tweak it once the summer's over. So we have a residential fall camp one each month in the high school preseason. A lot of the kids who come onto the residential training camps in the fall, our wrestlers are with us in the summer. This was a little bit of an anomaly, the third one. We had a large amount of new wrestlers who weren't with us. But many of them came with wrestlers who had been in the summer and wanted to share the opportunity with them. From my perspective, a positive outcome of the fall residential training camps is for these wrestlers to have an opportunity to cement what they learned in the summer, to feel confident going into their high school season, to feel prepared, and to be able to add on for where they were last year. At this residential training camp, I learned a great deal about the opportunity for new wrestlers to come in the middle of the fall preseason. In the past, we haven't had a lot of kids add on in the fall. They've either come during the high school season or during the summer, but I was really enthusiastic about the quality of the outcome of the wrestling that I saw from the kids who started with us on Saturday for the first session and ended with us in the fourth session on Sunday when they wrestled live. What they learn here, they can apply to all areas of technique that they've learned, whether they've learned it here at Wrestling Prep or for many of the other supportive coaches that they have. It's the concept of the body leveraging, how to distribute your weight and what muscle sequence. It remains the same and standard through most technique, regardless of whether they, where they learn it from. I look to spend a lot of time researching and working with kids initially like Jason Welch and Nico Trigas, Hunter Collins, and we came up with a system of a series of movements. Um, some people would call them gymnastics. Some people might call it basic Pilates, or in some cases yoga. But putting them together by top or bottom or trips or legs in, and then teaching them how to do that when we taught that technique. So they were prepared to do what they were actually being taught initially on the spot and then developing the muscle memory that would carry forward. When I see how the residential training camps have progressed, I can't help but hope that they become more pervasive and maybe even eventually duplicated by other organizations or facilities that have the opportunity to do it. Having a place where people can come and train with a variety of coaches, reside, learn from each other about their college experiences, their education experiences, or what's available to them in the future, having a variety of um, athletes of all levels, whether they're international or MMA guys we have here come through, or any of the college wrestling, prep college wrestlers that come back, and then have all these people together residing and training and trying new things is outstanding. When people ask me why I spend so much time and energy trying to make these camps successful, I have to really realize that I believe it's in the very best interest of the student athletes. For them to have these opportunities, for them to build confidence, for them to get to be around people like you, for example, or any of the other residents we have in the area, and, and um, grow from it and take forward to their season. You are so on. Hey, we're making a, do a we're making documentary, Thank so the you. whole practice I'll uh -oh. be like this. Thank you very much. Right in my face? <laughs> Thank you.